Hit subscribe and press the bell notification button to never miss a video. Hello, hello. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Shivangi Lahoti and I'm so excited to welcome all of you for the second video of our Your Fashion Life Challenge, which is a five day free training that I'm doing on this channel for all design aspirants, design enthusiasts, design graduates, design students, everybody who wants to pursue a career in fashion and design. This is Your Dream Fashion Life Challenge. And I'm so, so excited to welcome each one of you here because this is a celebration of of our 70,000 subscribers. Super excited to be here. To those of you who've just joined the family very recently. Hi, my name is Shivangi Lahoti. I'm an award-winning design graduate from NIF Mumbai and FIT New York with a certification from IIM Ahmedabad in creative and cultural businesses. Over the last few years, I've had the fortune of being featured on Your Story, We Work, Pool Magazine, Vogue, Cosmopolitan, Mumbai Mirror, and the likes. How? Well, I am a fashion designer. I have my own label by the name Inaya and Co. I am a content creator. I have been on YouTube for the last four years building content on fashion and education. Uh, started when there was no one in the country focusing on fashion education and I really wanted to focus on it because I'm a small town girl. I am a girl from the upper hills of Assam and wanted to make sure that no other Shivangi ever faces difficulties when she is sitting down for her entrance examinations and wants to build a career in fashion. And of course, I'm a fashion educator. I just recently started my own design academy me designer shala which is an online virtual academy and this is actually an association with designer shala because to me learning should never stop whether you enroll in my courses or not i will try and keep coming up with creative and innovative ways to make sure that all of my bachas always gain something from here and from this platform just to do a quick recap Day one was all about laying a very, very strong foundation. So if you haven't seen the video for the first part of this series, which is a five part series, please make sure you go ahead and give that video a watch. It'll help you a lot to answer some deep questions. And in retrospect, I can say that if I'd asked these questions back in the day, I would have been at a much better place, much faster. I did ask these questions, but later in life. However, professional goal setting, uh, decluttering your lives and getting focused is what we focused on. We also made an Ikigai chart and a vision board. The link to that video is in the description. So make sure you go ahead and give it a watch. And of course, continue watching till the end because there is a challenge and I want you to learn every single day. And whether the giveaway is on or not, if you're watching this after the 5th of March, possibly the giveaway is not open anymore, but learning shouldn't stop and you are gaining a lot in terms of learning. So continue watching, okay? Awesome. So day two is all about making that perfect resume and let's bust a myth right here. There's no such thing as perfect. Okay. Perfection in itself is a lie. It's a myth. But we're trying to get to a stage where we're making progress and our resume is better than what it was before. And if it's your first time applying for design jobs or design internships, I just want to make sure that you get it the first time or maybe the first 10 times you at least have a much, much, much better chance of getting in. And trust me when I say this, this is after seeing hundreds of resumes as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, and having seen hundreds of portfolios on a daily basis as, you know, a guest faculty at a lot of colleges and after having reviewed so many juries and so many projects that I decided that my students need to know a little extra to make sure that they stand out when they stand in the crowd. <laughs> So what will we be focusing on today? Today, we will be focusing on these things, which is why do you need a resume? Who reads your resume, which is very important to understand and how to make a great resume. So CV versus resume is one thing that I want you guys to understand before we even get started, okay? And before we even dive into it. CV in very simple terms is curriculum vitae, which is short form for this huge long name. So an easy way to remember what a CV is, a CV is basically a very long format, a detailed explanation of everything that you've done in your design career or your career in general, irrespective of whether you're in design or not. And it's usually three to four pages, at least two pages and more. And it's somebody, it's for somebody who who's done a lot in the design uh, field or their respective field. And they come with a lot of experience and they have a lot to talk about. Hence, you need a, a CV for somebody like that. A resume, however, is a one pager. Max, you can extend it to two pages or maybe one and a half pages. But it's ideal if you restrict it to one, one and a half pages. And 
a resume is a document which is essentially like a marketing tool to endorse your services, your qualifications and skills to get a job or an internship. The end goal of the resume is very difficult uh, to gauge, uh, but it's so simple, right? You need a job and that's why you're making it. But often when uh, design students, designers, um, most most freshers out there when they sit down to make their first resume they forget that the end goal is to make sure that you get that job or you get that internship so when you start with the end in mind you have so much more clarity in terms of what you want to put in and to understand what you want to put in and what you should be putting it you need to understand who reads your resumes right because at the end of the day those are the people who are evaluating if you're worthy of working with them or not and who reads your resumes founders, uh, if you're applying for small startups, recruiters, if you are applying to, you know, agencies and hiring managers. So there are different kinds of people who sit down and are on the other side of the computer screen looking at your resumes. If it's a small setup, if it's a small company, there is a fair possibility that you might be directly, you know, emailing the founder. If it is um, a decent sized company, but they have their own in-house hiring manager or an HR, then probably, or like a talent acquisition manager, you'd be reaching out to them. However, there are a lot of times when big, ginormous companies actually have a um, recruiters and recruiting agencies which are specialized in uh, getting talent and uh, they reach out to them and consider the first person still as like you know as a decent number of uh, he'd be receiving like you know maybe 10 to 15 cvs per week or maybe in a couple of days but for recruiters and hiring managers the volume is much more their volume is immense right they're going through hundreds and hundreds of resumes on a daily basis so they're busy they're overloaded with work and they don't have the time so your resume for it to stand out you need it to be absolutely crisp clutter free and catchy how do you do it wait we are getting there <laughs> how to make a great resume these are some things that i've listed down here which will help you in terms of layouting and I personally think that these are the six sections you should be dividing your resume in if you come with little or no work experience. Your personal details, which is the section where you talk about your name, your age, maybe your date of birth, if not your age, your email address, your phone number, and your residential address, if at all, or maybe just your location, just your city. Your profile summary is the space where you talk completely about yourself your educational qualification is the segment where you talk completely about all your qualifications uh, including your 10th 12th college masters phd whatever it is that you've done and if you're just a fresh uh, you know 12th pass out then you talk about until 10th and 12th and you say that first year design school or you know uh, first semester design school or second semester design school of course, your volunteer work section is so important and so missed out on because this is the segment, this is the section which kind of, in a way, you could say um, compensates for not having uh, work experience or having very little work experience because it tells and lets the other person know that you are capable of taking responsibility. And even though you don't have a lot of work experience, you have voluntarily gone ahead and done work out there for causes that you believe in. Your achievements and certifications is, you know, the section where you talk all about all the awards and prizes that you must have gotten, which will add value to your resume, right? And also uh, any sort of certifications, online courses that you've done, you put them here. And your skills, of course, is your soft skills and your hard skills. Your hard skills are, uh, you know, all your software skills, all your Microsoft, Adobe software, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Your soft skills are actually maybe like interpersonal relationships, uh, you know, communication skills, leadership skills, etc, etc. And this is how exactly you should be dividing your uh, layout and making sure that you have these six sections, at least. Um, you don't need a lot to be honest. This these six, if you have them, it's more than enough. It's how you now write in them, which is important. Just to go into a little bit of more details, your personal details, your name, phone number, email address, and location. Avoid actually putting in your complete residential address. It's A, uh, sensitive information, and B, it's not required. Your location is required for only 
just one purpose mainly which is they just want to know that if you're in the city where you're applying for and if not uh, then you should be writing next to it in a bracket that uh, available to relocate or willing to relocate your profile summary is that cool section where you don't talk about your education and you know mundane things but you actually talk about yourself as a fun person because this is the part which speaks on behalf of you and for you so your profile summary could start something like Currently in my final semester at Da 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 with a specialization in knits, I'm a young design thinker willing to explore and work with brands like yourself who are pioneers when it comes to innovation in knits. Or you could have something like this. Having graduated from Da 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 in fashion design with multiple awards, I have a proven aptitude for women's evening wear and I'd be an asset to your organization with my understanding of designing. So you basically pitch them who you are as a person, uh, very casually you know i'm a young design thinker willing to explore da, da, da. and you also tell them you just butter them up a little just a little last line that's all you don't have to go all crazy okay just one line is enough just to say that you know i'd be an asset to your organization or your esteemed organization um you know i admire the kind of work you've been doing over the years and i've been following you and it'll be absolutely amazing to jam with you and like you know create some amazing content or create some amazing designs uh, don't use the language jam <laughs> might not be a good idea now your education qualification this is exactly how i would do it and this is how i would want you to do it as well this is the standard way where uh, you know we were taught in uh, fit new york when i was studying there which is you have your institute's name you have your specialization or class and you have your grade and percentage right and you also have your year marked in bracket so an example here on the right is dps rk purum 2018 class 12 92 right then your volunteer work okay this section i said it already it compensates for other things so that you know it makes the employer feel that you're willing to learn that you're responsible and you will take charge not will not take charge you will take charge <laughs> also um you know volunteer for a cause that you believe in uh recruiters and hiring managers are not idiots uh they know a fake when they see a fake so don't just do it for the certification don't just do it because you know it'll add value to your cv absolutely do it only if you feel really really inspired or you feel very driven and you believe in the cause and volunteer for at least a few months right uh, to compensate for lack of work experience it's always a good idea to volunteer you don't have to volunteer full time right you could always be volunteering over the weekends for like two or three months or you could be doing it like three days a week etc for a couple of hours maybe you might be writing content for them you might be handling their social media for them you might be going on ground and doing activities for them you might be teaching crafts for them you might be you know uh, teaching embroidery or paper craft or paper bags etc etc there's so much that you could be doing right but do it for a cause that you believe in it's very very important this is the section where you put in your awards your competitions uh, you know courses certifications anything that you have participated in showing them uh, you know this basically is the section which is showing them that you are um, not just into education and academics but you've also gone ahead and done other things and achieved and also you are willing to learn and up level and upgrade yourself so you're always looking for opportunities to grow and learn basically your learning curve hasn't happened yet you're still like you know growing and uh, you're moving towards uh, a direction where you are willing to invest in yourself so this section is really important now this is the skills section which is you know skills like social media handling uh, content writing illustrations fashion illustrations digital art uh, microsoft word microsoft excel basically microsoft office adobe suite all of these things are really helpful when it comes to your skills so and this is how i would do it as a creative person um, and as a design student or a design aspirant or a designer you should be having some elements of design in your cv so a good idea could be to actually make a pie chart or have you know these status bars or progress bars and you could just fill it more uh, where you feel that okay your skills in adobe premiere pro are like 90% so fill it till 90% your skills in illustrator however are 70% so kind of mark your own self which looks creative and uh, at the same time it just is a lot more interesting some additional points for you no loud colors you can add colors for your resume but limit it to one to two colors uh, as in like other than black or gray dark gray if you're using it 
one or two other colors not more than that you don't want it to become a rainbow right the job here the objective here is to get them to see our cv and consider us as professionals um, another tip is always go for a4 size sheets do not go for any other size okay clear division of each section is really really important and of course your font size uh, should be 10 to 12 ideally you can have arial times new roman tacoma uh, tahoma not tacoma tahoma uh, times new roman is actually a little boring so i would personally say it's it's advisable it's safe but i would say like tahoma is a little fresh um, robota is also a little fresh uh, of course arial add your professional social links please if you have a link to your portfolio add it there if you have a link to your linkedin which you should if you've done day one of training you know that you need to have a linkedin account and have like a very professional looking linkedin page please make sure that uh, you know you add the social link for it and uh, if you have a professional Instagram account, not your personal account with your selfies, your professional account which talks about your work, then go ahead and add that as well. Your CV is supposed to be, your resume rather, is supposed to be in a PDF format, not as an image. And your file name should be your first name and last name. Shivangi Lahoti resume, for example. It cannot be copy of copy of copy resume. No. <laughs> it also cannot be uh, CV Manya jo, I don't know, my Manya Joshi uh, 001, 007, <laughs> don't do that, okay? If you don't have enough work experience, work on making other sections the hero of your resume. This is important. I know it might feel overwhelming, but if you're somebody who's applying for a job for the first time, you'll get your gig. Compensate it with, uh, you know, volunteer work by showing that you've invested in different courses online. Uh, you have, you know, done different kinds of uh, self-initiated projects just to make sure that they feel that you're responsible you're willing you're always on your toes and uh, you're not just like a lazy bum who's not done it because they couldn't you did not get a job in fashion but that didn't stop you from exploring other angles and other aspects and it just shows you who you are as a person okay so today's activity is um, do not share any sensitive information like your phone number mail id or email address but make your resume make a resume uh, leave these sections blank or just put like no number you know at gmail.com or don't mail here at gmail.com or something like that and uh, brownie points if you tag designer shala on uh, you know instagram and that's it for today's training you guys i hope you learned something from uh, this um training and uh, i'll see you tomorrow uh, for our third day, which will be focusing on the third video is completely focused on building your portfolio and rookie mistakes you should not be making when you're working on your design portfolio and things you should be considering when you're making your design portfolio. So I hope to see you hop on to the third video <laughs> and I'll see you guys around. Bye.